Now, chances are you've never actually played Dragon's Lair on the Game Boy. If you've played any of the other home ports by this point, you'll no doubt have come to the conclusion that it was going to be just as awful as all of the others. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may remember that I got so annoyed with the ZX Spectrum version of the game that I instead started to tell a harmless true story about a harmless bowl of sweets that definitely did not involve an animal turd. Dragon's Lair is certainly not a game that's a stranger to ports, and to sit here and read them all out would inflate the length of this video by practically double, so here's some footage of me being an expert researcher and slowly scrolling through Wikipedia. Most of these formats, as you well know, were simply not able to recreate the one thing people actually liked about the arcade original, the beautiful hand-drawn artwork. And so it came to be that the vast majority of these ports either fell into the category of quick-time events, like the ZX Spectrum version, or crap platformers, crap flormers, like the SNES version. The Game Boy port falls into that second category. It is a platformer. But unlike the SNES and NES versions, which were largely original titles, the Game Boy version is not a wholly original title. Have you spotted what it is yet? Dragon's Lair on the Game Boy is, in fact, nothing more than a reskinned version of the game I reviewed this week, Roller Coaster. And I had absolutely no idea this thing existed, which is unsurprising really, because after experiencing the ZX Spectrum port as a child, you couldn't have convinced the teenage version of me to look at this thing through a pair of binoculars made out of tits. It was, in fact, friend of the channel Dudley of Yesterzine who pointed out that the game is a direct port. Go and watch that channel as well, links in the description. Essentially, Elite had pulled a fast one, taken a game that was six years old, swapped in some admittedly decent new artwork and called it a day. Instead of collecting bags of coins, you're collecting life stones. Instead of sitting on board roller coasters, you're balancing on minecarts. Instead of riding carousels, you're... Uh, still riding carousels. Apparently they couldn't think of anything to change those two. There's very little here outside the visuals that's actually been changed. You still get 10 lives, you still have a pension for falling through platforms, although not quite as bad as the Spectrum version, and you still take fall damage. Or do you? Well, yes, but only in the Japanese and North American releases of the game. Falling from a height in those versions, much like in the Roller Coaster original, will result in Dirk's death. This resulted in the game receiving an absolute rollicking from the gaming press, with EGM rating the game a 17 out of 40, and GamePro rating the game 2 out of 5. With that in mind, Elite saw fit to change the gameplay when it was released in Europe. Fall damage was removed, and unlike in the original game, extra lives were granted for every 42 life stones collected. Presumably a Douglas Adams reference, because I guess... If you're going to make a port of a game but use a completely different game as the foundation, it doesn't really matter what references you shoehorn in there. Anyway, this meant that the Americans and Japanese got a port of the game they'd likely never experienced in its original form, and we got the game back in an altered form because the difficulty was one of the main criticisms received when it went to press. When it was released in Europe, with the changes in place, it even got close to perfect scores from sub-publications, which, come on, that is madness. So, there you are. If you didn't know it before, then you certainly know it now. Dragon's Lair on the Game Boy is, in fact, Roller Coaster, with a medieval theme and a lead character that barely resembles the original source material it's supposed to be referencing. And Americans hated it so much, we ended up getting an easier version off the back of it, even though the version they got was our original version of it. I'm not sure what the moral of the story is here, but I'm pretty sure it's got something to do with not quickly porting over a ZX Spectrum game and assuming you won't need to make changes to cater to an entirely different audience. Anyway, I'm glad Dudley got this information to me straight away, and no one else had spotted that this game was actually just roller coaster. It'd be awful if someone came on Twitter and tagged me in a post about it. Then this video would be no surprise at all. Which would be rubbish. 
and I'd probably be really angry about it and do a swear. Oh, you absolute fuck. <laughs>